What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and you're watching what is the first episode of hopefully a series of episodes. Uh, basically, the series I'm simply going to entitle Ramblings, and it's probably just going to be me talking about whatever random video game related stuff that uh, comes to, happens to come to my mind. I should probably point out that uh, they won't all be in this format. Uh, I just thought that for this particular episode, uh, it would be... What's the word? It was uh, to uh, fit well to uh, do it like this. Uh, th this first episode is going to be about games that I'm looking forward to. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit more specific than that, but I'll get into that in a moment. Um, and the reason it's, it kind of fits to do this video this way is simply because right now I'm on my way to my local EB Games to pre-order a couple of games. So, what exactly is this episode all about? Well, originally I wanted this episode to be about uh, Gamescom, which, I mean, if you don't know what that is, it's basically just a giant games convention that was held in Germany recently, uh, and that ended a little over a week ago. I was going to make this video then, but uh, it turned out that PAX was right on the end of it. PAX just finished a couple days ago, so I guess I'm a little overdue, but, you know, whatever. So, specifically what I want to talk about today is not, not just games that I'm looking forward to, because, I mean, obviously there's a lot of those, but some of them are just no-brainers. Let's hit the... Ah, we can cross. Just a second. Let me not die. Okay, I appear to have made it crossed alive. Um, so yeah, some games are just no no brainers. Uh, so I want to talk about. Well, I mean, some of the games I want to talk about are no brainers too. But specifically, I want to talk about games that just recently kind of caught my interest. And a lot of that is through uh, stuff that came out of uh, Gamescom. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more to come out of PAX, but maybe I just wasn't looking in the right places. It didn't seem like there was a lot of coverage for it. I guess PAX is a little bit more about the people in the community than uh, Gamescom or E3. But anyways... The first game I want to talk about is The Old Republic, which is, of course, uh, Bioware's upcoming MMORPG set in the Star Wars universe. So everyone's been buzzing about this game for a long time. Everyone's saying, you know, it's going to crush World of Warcraft and all that. I mean, everyone says that about every MMORPG. Personally, I've tried to kind of ignore the hype on this game for a long time now. But I guess uh, I've just, just recently kind of given in, so to speak. Um, in fact, <laughs> in fact, I uh, pre-ordered it on the, the first day that uh, pre-orders were available for it. But, um... For me, at least, a big part of that is just because my guild has... My, my guild from World of Warcraft has kind of transitioned... Not to that game, but like... Uh, we're gonna like play both, I guess. Uh, we even transferred our uh, guild forums to a new host that supports multiple games. So it's got full support for both World of Warcraft and the Old Republic. Uh, but I gotta say, uh, now that I've, I'm actually starting to see like gameplay footage and stuff, 
It looks pretty solid. I mean, gameplay wise, I don't see anything super innovative or anything like that. But just the, the fact that it looks really solid and it's uh, set in, you know, it's firmly set in Star Wars mythos. It's, it's definitely got that Star Wars look and feel to it, which I love Warcraft and fantasy and all that, but I mean, I don't know, running around with like lightsabers and blaster bolts, that's, that's pretty cool, I gotta say. Let me cross the road again here. Try not to die because I'm hay walking. Okay, here we go. So, where was I? All right, the Old Republic. So, I guess my biggest concern about this game is the same as any new big uh, MMO. And that's just the fact that I'm a really big PvE guy. I'm not all into, you know, killing other players and stuff. That's just a little bit too competitive for my personal taste. I do like kind of screwing around with it, but... Uh, I, I'm more interested in the PvE. And they haven't really said a whole lot what the endgame PvE is going to look like. It's not surprising, but it's a little concerning. But, um, what I have seen, you know, it looks cool, and what, uh, what little I've heard from interviews and stuff, uh, it sounds like they've, they've got, you know, they've got their plans, so it, it should look good. But, uh, at this point, honestly, even if the endgame PvE doesn't really pan out quite the way I would hope, um... I'm thinking it's, it's probably, you know, a game worth playing just for, you know, the storyline. Playing it almost as, like, KOTOR 3. Not that I've ever actually played the first two games to any large extent. But, I mean, the, the story aspect looks pretty good, and... Yeah. Uh, now, the second game I want to talk about, ironically enough, is... Another super hyped MMORPG built by the name of Guild Wars 2. And just like uh, the Old Republic, this is a game that I've never—I haven't really been uh, following. I've just kind of ignored its existence for the past, I guess, four years. I think it started development in 2007, something like that. Um. But now that I, I've I kind of got a glimpse of what the game is looking like, I gotta say, it's looking pretty freaking awesome. Um, and really, it caught me by surprise. I mean, I played the first Guild Wars a little bit. Uh, I played Prophecies for like a month. I, I never played any of the expansions or anything. Um, and it seemed like a good game, I guess. But just really wasn't my thing. Because, I mean, like I said, I'm not really all into that PvP stuff a whole lot. And the first Guild Wars was all about PvP. Um, but in Guild Wars 2, I mean, I just love, like, everything I see and hear about this game. Uh, like, the, I love the art style. The questing sounds amazing. They've got, I mean, I haven't, really, like, read their exact description of what their questing concept is or whatever. But from what I've seen, there's like a few key things. Uh, the first is that there's like... Quests are almost like area quests. Where the, your quest isn't like, go kill 13 buzzards and then go collect, you know, seven boar livers. It's more like, these people over here need help, and go help them. And so you go over there and you just do whatever to help them. But you can help them in like a bunch of different ways. You can like pick stuff up for them. You can kill guys for them. You can like, I don't know, whatever. And they all like contribute to the same goal. 
so you can kind of do whatever you want to kind of complete that quest. And at the same time, there are all these like events and dynamically popping up all over the place. And it really kind of encourages you to play the way you want, as well as kind of like explore. And possibly the most interesting thing to me is that I guess every zone is supposed to have almost like a sliding progressive scale kind of thing where um, the your like enemies, enemy mobs, enemy NPCs, they like attack your, your quest hubs and stuff and you have to like fight them off and depending on how well you do and not, not just you as a person but like everyone in the zone, how, how well the zone collectively does um, it like affects your questing experience because you know if you don't do very well and you lose that battle then maybe you like you lose access to that quest hub for a while uh, well not just for a while but you lose access to that quest hub until you take it back your quest change you know maybe you've got to like uh, do some quests to like rebound from that loss and you know refortify at the next position or whatever but likewise if you win that battle uh, you kind of push the, your enemies back uh, further down that line and your quests turn into you know pushing your advantage uh, gathering resources for the next assault whatever that seems like a really interesting system where you know, all these things combined means that your questing experience is never going to be the same twice. You know, even if you play the exact same class and race combination, you know, ten times, it would never be the same exact same experience. And that to me is just amazing. Another thing that really interests me is um, something that might turn a lot of people off, actually. And that's the fact that uh, supposedly as much as like a third of the game is going to take place underwater. And to me, I mean, I've always said, you know, since, you know, the first time I said it was probably within a month of starting WoW. Maybe not a month. It took me a month to get to level 60. So I guess, you know, a month and a half. Is that they need to do more underwater stuff. They need to do more of it and they need to do it better. Because when you add in that, that Z access and you're you're playing and you know taking full advantage of the three dimensions, I think that has a lot of potential to add a lot to your game. And uh, I guess World of Warcraft has kind of started to take advantage of that a little bit. I mean you look at a fight like Al's Razor in Firelands. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, in that fight, one of the things that uh, at least, you know, some people get to do is they get to collect little feathers and you fly around through the air after this big boss and uh, they fly through these little rings of fire that give them a buff so they gotta kind of like fly through the rings and nuke the boss in the air. That's really fun. And I mean, that's just an example of, you know, how awesome taking good advantage of the third dimension can be. Um, but for the most part, WoW's well, never really kind of embraced that. Guild Wars, I mean, they're just, you know, going all out. Uh, I mean, from what I can tell, uh, there, sh there should be no kind of compromise in the gameplay just because you're underwater. Your, uh, your characters are going to play a little bit differently. I mean, obviously you're not like going to be shooting fireballs underwater, but it shouldn't be a worse experience, it should just be different. Um, possibly one of the, the most impressive things that I heard was that uh, I heard in an interview that they said that they have an ability that actually hits underwater, it hits in a column, and that just impressed the heck out of me, because I mean, 
if you think about it, AOE abilities have been around in MMOs since, you know, the beginning of time. But it, they always exist in the form of, like, a targeting circle. The ability to not only move around in the three dimensions, but, like, AOE in a straight column, up and down. I mean, I, I'm not sure how useful that would actually be. It seems something like something that would be a little hard to target. But I mean, that's just really cool. And that just shows to me kind of how forward thinking they are with this underwater stuff. So I'm really looking forward to what this underwater stuff looks like. Of course, uh, with, as with any MMO, but my biggest concern about Guild Wars is what the endgame PvE is going to look like. I don't know what the PvE looked like in any of the Guild Wars expansions, but PvE in the Prophecies was pretty bad. Um, and possibly one of the most concerning things to me is the fact that uh, Guild Wars 2 is trying to completely do away with the, the Holy Trinity, the tank, the healer, and the DPS. And I don't know how well that's going to work out in like a dungeon environment. Because, I mean, it seems to me that their, their intention is to have everyone kind of fend for themselves. Or rather, that's what I think it's going to end up looking like. I, I don't see how it wouldn't end up like that. And that doesn't feel like kind of a group effort to me. But, I mean, I, I'm, I guess I'm kind of optimistically cautious. But, uh... Probably my biggest concern is just the fact that I haven't really said anything about their PvE. So, I mean, no one really knows what it's even going to look like. I mean, not that that really even matters a whole lot, because, I mean, even if you have all these developers' words, I mean, you can never really tell until you're there what it looks like. But, I mean, I guess that kind of leads me to my... one of the biggest things that draws me to this game, and that's the fact that... It's a one-time purchase. There's no subscription fee. Of course, this is something they did with the original Guild Wars as well. But in this day and age, doing it again, I don't know. I mean, it seems something like really simple, a really simple decision to make. But to me, it's, it seems almost like genius because it's like there's all these other MMOs out there. There's a lot, a lot, I mean, for the longest time, WoW was the only MMO worth playing. And now they have all these other great MMOs, like Rift and old, the Old Republic's coming out, and who knows what else. So, I mean, it almost seems to me like they're not expecting to crush these other games. I mean, that's not what they're counting on, like uh, a game with a subscription fee would be. With Guild Wars... It's a one-time purchase, and you play for, you know, the rest of your life for free. So, you know, you, you can buy it. You can play along with an, another MMO if you want. You can play it as much or as little as you want. And, I mean, that's a big part of the problem that I had with Rift. It's just the fact that, you know, I love Rift. It's a great game. I, I pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered the Collector's Edition. Uh, but... I've been playing World of Warcraft for a long time now. You know, I've, I've met a lot of people there. I've been playing this game for like six years or whatever. So it's really hard for me to, to justify being able, uh, like paying for another MMO that, you know, while it's going to be my priority basically until it dies as far as MMOs go. So like, it's hard for me to justify paying for another game that is always going to play second fiddle to WoW. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to have the time to commit to it. Um, I mean, sometimes, you know, obviously WoW gets slower, you know, in between patches and stuff. But with Guild Wars, that's not an issue. Just, you know, buy the box or whatever, uh, pay for your account, then you play it whenever you've got time. And so that brings us to the next game on the list. Uh, and the next game is also an MMO, but this one is a very different kind of MMO. Uh, it goes by the name of Firefall. Of 
Firefall is a bit of an odd game to, for me at least, to explain because it's kind of like a third-person shooter, and shooters really aren't my thing. Um, I mean, I dabble in them. I've played, you know, Bioshock, but they're really not my thing. Um, from looking at it, Firefall seems like kind of a Team Fortress 2 mixed with Tribes kind of game. Uh, it's got, you know, class-based stuff, but it's mostly, you know, s driven by skill. Uh, but that's not really what interests me. What interests me about Firefall is the MMO aspects. I mean, of course, there's, you know, persistence, there's upgrading your, uh, your, uh, each class and customizing your loadout with different weapons that have different abilities and all that. But there also, there's also supposed to be this PvE aspect of it. It's like a big wide open world with like quests and I don't know if there's supposed to be like dungeons or anything. But that just seems really interesting to me. It's like a third person shooter MMO. Like in the most literal sense. Uh, I want to say I mean, my first instinct is, you know, has any game ever done this? I mean, apparently they have. Uh, I guess there's... Oh, what's it called? I had the name of it just a minute ago. Uh, there, there was another game that did something like this, but uh, I, I don't know how successful it was. But, I mean, it's really interesting to me. Um, so, I mean, I signed up for the beta, like, you know, the, as soon as I heard about this game. It's going to be free to play, so same thing as Guild Wars, you know? Except, you know, you don't even have to buy the box. You just download the client, sign up for an account, you screw around with it, and if you like it, you keep playing it. Maybe pay for some features or whatever. If you don't like it, then uninstall the client. But I'm really interested to try it out, because, like, it just seems really interesting to me how a shooter would mix with those RPG elements. I mean, there's not a lot of RPG shooters out there in the most literal sense. I mean, of course there's like Deus Ex, but that's almost more of like a stealth game. And honestly, the, the, the first game that comes to mind when I think about, you know, an MMO shooter is Borderlands. It's an RPG shooter. I mean, obviously Borderlands is an amazing game. I don't expect Firefall to be, you know, Borderlands Online. Obviously, it's its own game. But it looks really solid, and I'm interested to see what it looks like. Uh, the fourth game on the docket today is, uh, it goes by the name of Smite. Uh, and I don't think they've actually released a whole lot of anything about this game yet. Uh, I don't know if there's even screenshots of it yet. Now, basically, what Smite is, it's, it's um... A third-person MOBA game. If you don't know what a MOBA is, it's uh, basically... Uh, I believe it stands for Multi-Opponent Battle Arena. And uh, it's, a, it's an acronym kind of coined by games like uh, Defense of the Ancients and League of Legends and all those. And... Normally I wouldn't really be interested in this kind of stuff. I mean, I never played Dota. I don't really play League of Legends a whole lot. I mostly just, you know, play against bots just to screw around if I got, like, some time to kill and nothing to really do. But, because I've been playing Defense of the Ancients, I'm kind of, you know, into the genre now. I kind of have an idea what it's all about, and the concept of doing it third person really intrigues me. I don't know if any game's ever done you know, a really good third-person MOBA-type game. Um, of course, there's, uh, I think it's called Monday Night Combat, and that's like a third-person shooter that's supposed... I think it's supposed to be kind of MOBA-ish. Uh, it's actually, they're coming out with like a, like a free-to-play version of that game sometime, apparently, but... I don't know, Smite... Smite's, I guess, more kind of traditional-style MOBA. But really intrigues me how third person would mix together with the MOBA genre. Because, I mean, it takes a lot of the elements that people kind of take for granted about MOBA games and kind of flips them on their head. 
because of course the big part of these games is kind of at high level of play at least is knowing it's like information it's knowing where to be where other people are kind of communicating ganks and stuff like that but with a third person camera instead of kind of over the head it's you, you have a uh, you know, a much more restricted field of vision. And of course, you can't just like click around the map to see where exactly everyone is. Uh, I don't know if there even is a mini map, but maybe. I don't know. I would assume there. I don't know. Um, and I guess the other thing is that it should give a lot more kind of weight to the combat. That's not to say that, you know, skirmishes in your typical MOBA game are simplistic by any stretch of the imagination. But playing like a like a third person action game should add a lot more weight to the combat. And it's kind of weird because like it makes it a lot more of a kind of personal experience. It's like you're right up in your own character doing your thing and you you have like no idea what's going on everywhere else. But at the same time, you know, communicating with, you know, your allies and stuff and coordinating becomes all the more important because at its heart, it's still a MOBA game. I don't know, it just seems really interesting. I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more about it. Okay, so I've made it to my destination dropped a pre-order for uh, Skyward Sword Limited Edition and Final Fantasy 13 too. So I've got a couple other games to look forward to. Pick myself up a little refreshment because it is hot out today. Well that just always happens to be the way. Whenever I, I walk anywhere it always ends up being unseasonably hot. Even during the winter. It's, just the way it goes for me. So I'm on my way back home, but I'm not done with you yet. Got one more game I want to talk about. I'll try not to get run over in the parking lot here. So the last game on my list for today is a game that uh, Lake Smite. I don't think has they've have released any media about this game yet. Uh, but there's been some buzz. I know it was shown uh, behind closed doors at at least at Gamescom. I have no idea about PAX. It goes by the name of Kingdoms of Amalur. Uh, when I first heard about this game, I could have sworn there was this game was already released. Uh, the, the title sounds very familiar. I'm pretty sure there's another game called like I mean I'm in lure or something like that like Amalur with an N I don't know maybe I'm wrong because I mean I'm sure if that was the case there would be some sort of lawsuit over it I mean hell if Notch can't call his game scrolls because of uh, the Elder Scrolls I'm sure that would be a problem as well But uh, anyways, the uh, the tagline that you're probably going to hear about this game in you know every review and every preview ever, uh, I believe it's the, the developer themselves used, is that uh, this game is supposed to be kind of a marriage of Oblivion and God of War. It takes kind of like the open world RPG elements of Oblivion. But rather than being, you know, first person, it's, you know, a third person action. The, the combat comes down to being like, you know, hardcore combo based spectacle fighter like God of War or Devil May Cry or maybe Bayonetta. I never played Bayonetta, but, you know, that's kind of irrelevant. But, um, I mean, 
That seems like a match made in heaven to me. I don't know why people... Why has no one done this before? I mean... I, I just don't know why no one's thought of this before. It seems like a brilliant idea. And I mean, like I said, there, there hasn't been any press released about this yet. I mean, well, not press, but media. There's, I don't think there's any screenshots or videos out there, but from everything I've heard from people who've experienced it behind those closed doors has been overwhelmingly positive. So, Kingdoms of Amalur. It's, it seems like it's definitely a game to watch for, uh, in my opinion. And, uh, that's the last game on my list. So, I guess now I should probably talk a little bit about, you know, this Ramblings series. So, hopefully this, I'm hoping that this is a series that I'm going to be able to do fairly regularly. Um, I've been meaning to do it for a while. Uh, I've just been really hard lately to find the time to do it, but, um, you know, starting, I guess, next week, I guess next week, um, the schedules around everything is should be a little bit more back to back to normal so I should have a, a lot more time to kind of just throw one of these together of course you know who knows how long this thing is and who knows how long all the other episodes are going to be I mean my name is rambling Josh for a reason um, uh, future videos like I, I mentioned at the beginning of this episode probably will not be kind of live uh, vlog type stuff. Uh, it's probably just going to end up being kind of a commentation accompanied by like screenshots or maybe gameplay footage. I want to be a little bit wary of, um, you know, how big these episodes get because obviously I tend to ramble a lot when I'm well, I was going to say when I don't have a script, but even when I do have a script you know, I pro probably ramble even more when I've got a script. Not that I've ever scripted anything. Um, at least not for this channel. But, um... So, keeping the, the size of the episodes down is a little bit of a concern for me because... You know, I don't want to spend all day uploading a single one of these things. Uh, I do have other things that I like to do. My hope is to do at least one of these every week. Uh, maybe on like every Wednesday or every Friday or something silly like that. Um, but I mean, I, w I would love to do more of these than, you know, just one a week. But it kind of depends on how well received it is. Uh, and how much of a kind of getting in the groove I can do. If I get to the point where I can just throw one together as quickly as, like, one of my Let's Play videos, well, I mean, it's probably never going to be that quick, just because these are probably going to be, like, a bajillion hours long. But, you know, if I can throw one of these together pretty quickly, and uh, I can find the time to actually upload it, then, you know, I, I would love to do like two or three a week or even just you know throw one up whenever I got something to talk about which I mean I guess it's kind of also dependent on how often I actually have something to talk about I don't know how quickly I'm gonna run out of things to say or I don't know if I'm gonna run out of things to say at all so uh, with that said I guess that's probably about it for the, the first episode of ramblings um, uh, the last thing I want to mention was that a lot of what I said today is based off of, of course, uh, game, Gamescon coverage. And um, a lot of, well, pretty much all of my Gamescom coverage came from either, uh, well, other, other channels on YouTube. I, the first and foremost is uh, Total Biscuits coverage, which you can find on the YouTube channel. Uh, youtube.com slash total halibut and a little bit came from uh, the Yogg's cast which uh, I believe their channel is youtube.com slash blue sephos so uh, I'll put like a link in the description or something about uh, 
where to find that stuff. It's great coverage. So, I mean, uh, if you're just interested in what went down at Gamescom at all, or uh, where I got some of the stuff that I'm talking about now, uh, that's where you can find it. So, anyways, with that, uh, I leave you here for the first episode of Ramblings. Catch you later.